Hey folks, AJ here, and I know we're late to the party, but we finally got one. Let's take a look at the ATEM streaming bridge and what it can do for your ministry. So let's go. AJ, the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by. And on this channel, we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. Now, I have to admit, when they first announced this, I pre-ordered it during the presentation of it um, from Blackmagic um, at BH Photo. I ordered it. Three months went by. I didn't get it. Another month went by. I was like, you know what? I can use this money for something else. Canceled it and got something else. So, but with a lot of installs that we're doing, and I'm actually working on a series of different type of extenders just to have a, a shootout with a whole bunch of them that you can do. I was like, everybody kept talking about this. They had a, a tip in a video that somebody said you can make one of these with a Raspberry Pi and all this other fun stuff. But... I was like, let me go ahead and try this again. Ordered it Friday. It came Sunday. So, hey, I don't know why I didn't just do it from the beginning. But anyway, <laughs> we got it here. Let's go over here to the other system and let's open it up and let's see what's inside. All right, here we go. Let's see what's inside. Similar packaging as usual. Got our international plugs, cable, and the unit. Where's my sticker? Where's my, there it is. Yay, we can add it to the collection. All right, so let's check out all the parts of this. So we have Two SDI outs, and it's really light too. Um, two SDI outs, an HDMI out, um, USB, and I think that's only for the utility, USB-C, power that you can screw on. You have SDI reference in here. Ethernet port, and we have SDI reference in and reference in. Don't exactly know what the difference of those are. I'm trying to get this in focus. There we go. So, hmm, very straightforward. So let's go ahead and get it hooked up, and let's see. Um, I guess we need to cut over to the computer and get some software and all the other fun stuff. But let's set it up here. I got another Ethernet cable up under the table. Let's get it set up, and then let's see what we can do with it. All right, so like I said, uh, we're going to hook this up here. And... I don't have a long enough um, HDMI. I actually left that at church for something else. So let's go ahead and get this all plugged in to the HDMI out here. So you can see exactly how everything is set up. HDMI out. I'm not using SDI out. I guess technically I could. Yeah, because my SDI out is right there. Yes, let's actually, let's do both. How about that? Let's do both. All right, so I got my SDI out right there, and I need to get my converter over here. I think I took, oh, it's right here under my stuff here. No, this isn't mine. We'll use the bi-directional one, so we got the bi-directional micro converter, so that's what we'll hook up here. All right, everything is hooked up. Let's turn on the TV. So we're on HDMI 2. Nothing is popping up, so I'm not exactly sure what's up with that. But let's go over here to the computer and let's see about some software for this thing. And let's go ahead and bring up our setup software. And something is being detected. Oh, okay. So it picks up that way. So that's cool. All right. So let's see what's inside here. Um... All right, so we have it as DHCP. It's pulling the IP address from my network. Okay. Give it a name. Disable remote configuration via Ethernet. Okay. 
streaming service broadcast from local network without key, local network with key, internet. All right, we're going to be playing with those. Then we also, the only thing else we got are reference timings of pixels and lines. So if I bring this over here, because I'm actually recording, if we go to live stream, what other options? Oh, and it shows a, a streaming bridge option. That's cool. So let's go ahead and set that. And I'm going to do on air and let's see what happens. Cause we got the, um, let me do a different super source here. So that way we can see everything at the same time. All right. So we got all the angles <laughs> that you want to look from here. So, all right. So let's go back over here to our software and we're going to start streaming to the streaming bridge. So let's do it on air. Awesome. I need to turn the volume down. All right, so that's cool. So pretty much it's streaming directly to that. Okay, so these act completely different. I switched to multi-view, and it's not showing anything on the screen. So let's get this straight. So we're this is picking up over my network. I have no physical connections and maybe I should pick that as another source in our um, super source so you can see let's switch that over to let's do number four and we'll do the top down so y'all can see what's going on with the device don't have nothing there that's the only thing so we're connected over the network and let's unplug the HDMI just to show So the only thing that's going on right now is the Ethernet coming in, SDI out, which is going to an SDI to HDMI converter, which is going to my 4K monitor that's right behind it. So that's really, really slick. Now, let's see. Um, let me, I'm thinking how y'all going to see this. I guess we can go to a two box view. All right. So what we're going to do is try and see if we can see a result of any form of latency or anything like that. And maybe I do need to switch my camera to the other one. All right. So let's see how, so I'm seeing from right here, there is a delay. Yeah, so there is a delay in this. Based off of what I'm seeing right now, again, I would not use this um, in a sanctuary. Like, I can see using something like this. I mean, that's 250 You can actually get some distribution stuff for less than that. But you, the benefit of this, you don't need to run cables to it. You can just have an Ethernet cable. You can pretty much place it anywhere. Um, and especially like in my scenario, let me go back to one camera. Like in my scenario, I would just go here and I can put this on the other side of the building and don't have to worry about wiring. And I don't need it to be in sync because you're so far away that it's not going to really be an issue. So like if you looked at any of my videos where I did the chapel and the other TVs in the um, in our church, I can bypass running a cable all the way there. I can put this thing in our networking closet and I can have that distribute out to the other TVs. So because TVs are so close, I could technically run SDI cable to each one. You could do it that way. Um, I guess you could put a, uh, a distribution hub on the other end of it. Um, but again, I mean, you have two HDMI outs. I mean, excuse me, you have two SDI outs and an HDMI out. So you can hook up three devices to this. So in my case, I could run an SDI into our multipurpose room, run an SDI into our chapel. And then um, if there was a closer place, maybe HDMI out. Or like I said, you can put extenders on that again if you really wanted to. I'm wondering, technically, you could probably get each one of the, get a bunch of these and put them on your network. I'm not going to buy another one for right now, but technically you could actually just have one of these units put right back on a TV and hook it up to a network. 
and put it on each TV. Um, again, it's cool. I would not use this. It's not fast enough to be in sync for me if I was putting this in a church and having it in the main sanctuary where the main source is, it's going to be a delay. Um, yeah, I, I have another ATEM. I probably want to set it up to see. They say that you can hook this up and do remote type of stuff between different networks and stuff like that. So let's try and let me see if I can figure out how to do that. And then we'll set that up and then we'll show you how that works. Hey, folks, this is future AJ here. A part that I forgot to mention in this video that this device only works with the ATEM Mini Pro and higher. So you, if you have just the base ATEM Mini, this will not work. You would have wasted your money if you only have an ATEM Mini. You need to have one that's uh, ATEM that's capable of live streaming. That is the Pro, the ATEM Mini Pro ISO, the ATEM Mini Extreme, the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. That's what will work with this ATEM streaming bridge. The lower model will not work. So let's go back to what we were doing. All right, so let's go ahead and take a, another look at our software here. Um, because there was something I missed. So let's cut back over here to our computer. Now we have our software here, obviously. And what we're going to do is, you know, we go through the parts we already talked about with our network and all this other stuff, but you have three options. Now, again, this is after the fact, because I was playing with it. You have a local network without a key. That's what I was using right now because I'm on my own network. I don't need to send it to nowhere. I don't need to encrypt it because the only way you can get on my network is if I let you get on my network. Um, but then you also could secure it with a key that you can make your own or you can just, you know, click it, the uh, key button and it will generate a new one. Um, similar to kind of like um, a more secure key for your Wi-Fi, something like that. Um, but then also you have the ability and I need to try and see if I can get in touch with somebody who has a, um, a, a Tim mini pro to get this to work, but you can also do this over the internet and you have to, I'm going to have to, to get not technical, super technical. I need to put this on the DMZ or put a hole in my, um, firewall so I can get through, but I will probably put this on the DMZ. In other words, put it in front of my firewall so that this can be accessible because it's asking for an IP address. So you technically can connect to this box from any computer in the world, as long as you have the key and you have the IP address to go to it. But as you can see, my internet status port forwarding, I'm getting an error because I do not have a hole in my um, firewall. That's the reason I would get that. I would fix that. But that just shows that if you had something like this, you could use this as a super, um, on steroids, <laughs> um, zoom call that somebody else that has an eight to mini pro can live stream to this. And then you can bring their feed in as another source into your ATEM. So that's really cool. Um, but like I said, I don't have access to another ATEM mini pro or higher right now to test this out. I, I do have access, but I can't say I need to see if somebody will let me borrow it, but, um, we'll see. And we might test it out in another video, but that's the other part I wanted to add to this that I did not go over in the, when I was breaking down the software. All right, so that's my initial impressions of this. Give me some scenarios of which I would like for me to test out. Now, one thing I was going to do, and I obviously didn't see it because I cut it out the video, is I was going to set up my other ATEM to um, stream to it and then to see, can I pick that up over the network as an input? Because that's what they said you could use it as. But I'm thinking that only works because you need an A10 Mini Pro or higher because you're streaming to the streaming bridge. And the base A10 Mini that I have doesn't support streaming. Um, but let me know whatever stuff that you would like to test out. Again, I may think about doing this. I, I literally just got back from Lynchburg where we're going to be um, doing an install um, putting in an estimate and then doing an install at my aunt's church. And I can sit back and think that maybe this might be a viable solution for downstairs. Um, cause that way I don't have to run cables downstairs. I just have to have one cable for internet. And then I can just have the two TVs that are going to be downstairs in the fellowship hall bridging off of this. That might be an option. I might want to test it out in that type of scenario, but let me know. These are my initial impressions. Again, Seems cool, 
I would not use it for anything that's inside my sanctuary where the main source is because in just a little bit of testing I did, there is a noticeable delay that would be if somebody was talking live on a pulpit and then broadcasting that um, to a projector or TV system or something like that. That would be a noticeable delay. It was at least like one second behind, but I don't know. Let me know um, down below. There's a link down below if you're interested in one of these. And like I said, please leave some comments. Let me know how you would want me to test this out because um, I, I got a, a lot of churches that I can just test this out and play and put put it in different scenarios to see how this may work. Um, like for another one now I'm thinking about right now, maybe this would work in our chapel where the only thing we're really sending is um, presentations to the 4K TV that's in the chapel. Maybe. I don't know. But like I said, let me know down below. Um, so if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. I want to thank the patrons for making this video possible. Their names on the screen right now. And you too can become a patron for as little as one dollar a month. Or you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button down below. No matter which way you pick, folks, you are helping us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We will see you on the next video later.